Remember how Mark Waite lost his shit because I changed the text from a panel from the Ignited comic? Remember how I had the character questioning whether she was a violent fascist? Remember how Mark Waite said I faked the art to quote, Lose his evidence that we're using our book as a pro-violence propaganda tool. Well, guess what happened in Ignited number four? Go on. Guess. Mm. 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 In the words of the great Ace Ventura. Yes! Yes! Oh, yeah! Can you feel that, buddy? Huh? 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 I have exercised the demons. This house is clear. Losers? Get him out of here! Losers! Let's go, Ace! Losers! Let me be heard. Oh no, Mark Wayne Kwanzaa to Jeffo totally didn't write a pro-violence propaganda extremist manifesto. Nope, they just write about their little Antifa wannabes struggle to push back against alt-right Nazis. That's why they have their little Antifa wannabes randomly attack people at a pro-gun rally. Not once, not twice, but like a dozen times. Unprovoked, I might add. These superpower kids literally ambushed the so-called alt-right Nazis who don't even fight back. They're armed to the teeth with guns, and not one of them fires a shot. They never even point their guns at these kids. They just get destroyed by these so-called heroes, and none of these kids think they've done anything wrong. They feel totally righteous in attacking people because those people hold different political views. You know, like Antifa does. To call this propaganda is an insult to propaganda. It's usually better written than this shit show. Two writers. Two writers. I can't tell whether Quanta was trying his hardest and failing to reach Mark Wade's level or whether Wade dialed his talent down to negative 42 to reach fake holidays. But either way, they managed the phenomenal feat of making the so-called alt-right Nazis the victims. That's right. These two idiots try so hard to be woke that they unironically make the so-called white supremacists the victims. Innocent, non-violent victims at that. Genius. Mark Wade pitched the fit about people saying that the book is pro-violence propaganda. This is a fourth issue, meaning he and Kwanzaa had plenty of time to edit this script before it went to print. So how does this book open? With ICE agents showing up at some Mexican's house. I'm not kidding, look at the screen. Pull over and look at the screen. Manjingo said, yes, that's some online rando's name because supposedly he calls himself Manjingo, talking to Docs Hun saying, one of those Phoenix SJWs, right? Yes, one of the Antifa wannabes pops up and attacks the ICE agents. Look at them. They're not threatening anybody. They don't have their weapons drawn. They're not trying to pull anybody out the house. One dude just pops a thumb over his shoulder like, let's go. That's it. For that, the Antifa wannabe literally blasts them off the porch. That's a felony. For real, that's not a joke. Section 13-1204 of the Arizona where the story takes place. Criminal Code for Aggravated Assault, subsection A8. You've committed assault if you seriously injure A, a peace officer or a person summoned and directed by the officer, B, a constable or person summoned and directed by the constable while engaged in the execution of any official duties, or if the assault occurs from the execution of the constable's official duties. They're doing their jobs, and this little terrorist attacks him for it, and we're supposed to take her side. Then Manjingo chimes in with what the reader is supposed to take as an unreasonable position. Quote, Dirt a lip tart, bitch. These guys are just doing their jobs. Those people are here illegally. Look at that. He's probably 17Q, running that woman as a drug mule. 17Q. Oh, you mean MS-13. What? Are you scared to say it? I thought you were a big, strong, dead man, Mark Wade. Kwanzaa's all like, I'm black, yo. I'm black, yo. I'm blacker than black than black, yo. Y'all ain't afraid of alt-right Nazis, the four of them that exist, but just mentioning Mexican gangbangers turns you straight, bitch. Seriously, though. Nothing this guy says is wrong. They're just doing their jobs. And if these people are in the country illegally, they should be deported. But then this pinche punta just randomly attacks them and we're supposed to be on her side. Why? Because she has stopped ICE agents from doing their jobs by seriously injuring, if not killing them? Oh, but no, this isn't a pro-violence propaganda tool. Not at all. 
Now I did skip one panel. The book actually starts off with the gimp going to a hospital to heal people. This is literally the only time we see any of them do something good. Four issues, one time. But don't be fooled, this little sociopath is going to show his true colors real soon. Then we see the Antifa wannabes texting all night. And this is what's supposed to be a moment to show their diverse opinions. Wade went on about this on his now new Facebook account, saying that they didn't all think the same way. And yet, the two reasonable kids commit the most violence later on. This is where we see the propaganda. The Gimp says that neo-Nazis are going to be at this pro-gun rally. How does he know this? Is he just assuming that because it's a pro-gun rally, these people must be white supremacists? There is no reason to assume that, unless you're a progressive. That's a progressive political position to assume that anyone who's right-wing and supports gun rights must be a Nazi. There's no evidence for this. It's just shit the progressives repeat until the left-leaning media picks it up and spreads it for them. Speaking of which, please share this video. And if you'd like to, donate down at one of the links below on Patreon or Ko-Fi because this video is totally getting demonetized. And like the video getting demonetized, just this quick, token Asian girl just casually goes along with this idea of Nazis being at the rally. If you could find enough of them to sell out a theater, I'd be shocked. We're not overrun with alt-right Nazis. Then this countless thought chimes in and says, quote, Warning guns at school is dumb as fuck. So we know Kwanzaa wrote this part. But it doesn't automatically make you the enemy. Keep that in mind because he's not going to. He's going to forget that shit in three pages. But look at the gimp. Look at his face. He's ready to kill. Mind you, nobody's done anything yet. They're just going to show up and support the policy of having teachers carry guns. And this is the face he makes when he thinks about going to the rally to stop it. Speaking of this rally, here we go. There's a caption that says, let's pray it's not a shit show. Too late. Now, in my last review, I mentioned this symbol, which I thought was something that probably meant white supremacy. And a bunch of people in the comments said that a handful of white folks use it. It's associated with Odin, the Norse god, and white purity or something like that. The fact that it's so obscure that I, who follows this stuff, have to be told what it is shows how nobody is using this. But when did the Tomoe become a so-called white supremacist symbol? I'm talking about this red comma thing. That's a Tomoe. If you've ever seen a Sharingan from Naruto, that's what this is. When did that become a white supremacist symbol? And if these people are white supremacists, what's up with Brother Man or his nappy-headed cousin? Why are they in this group of alt-right Nazis? Are they transracial? They look black but feel white on the inside? You have one job. One job. Make propaganda. And you fuck that up by making the so-called white supremacists ethnically diverse. Then the Antifa wannabes show up and being the brave warriors pushing back against the alt-right that they are, they hide behind a little brick wall. And I'm just going to read what they say because this is just... The Gimp says... I see the pro-guns. Where are the alt-rights? This is real. Look at the screen. This is real. Real dialogue in the book. I did not change a thing. I see the pro-guns. Where are the alt-rights? Nobody talks like this. Nobody. They're so confused like, I see white people. Then token Asian girl says, hiding in the crowd. Yeah, that's what they do. Fucking alt-right Nazis hiding in plain sight with all that white skin and good credit. She says, these days, the alt-right go low-key. Of course they do, honey. Back in the day, they had them Nazi haircuts that all you dickless hipsters wore when Macklemore was popular. But now you hate it, except for all your anime avatars that have the same haircut, especially the lesbians. Now you can't tell anybody apart. She says, they take advantage of community marches and pretend like they're speaking for the locals. No. That's Antifa. Wade and Kwanzaa literally describe what Antifa does and then project that onto the alt-right who nobody listens to. She says, it makes them less accountable if things go bad. That's literally the message the media panders every time they talk about Antifa. It's just a fringe group that happens to be at every rally Antifa attends on their side dressed exactly like them. Then the Gibbs says that token Asian girl is pretty smart about this stuff and she's like, AP poli side. Yeah, you're Antifa wannabes. We know. But that's not the part. This. This is the part. Discount Lestat says, so no clear targets. So how many are there in the crowd? Do we just push against everybody? This is real. 
This is the real dialogue in the book. This schmuck basically says, I can't tell the baddies from the goodies, so we just kill them all. And no one questions this. No one. No one's like, let's wait and see what happens. Or, no, we're not going to attack everybody, you psycho. No, what happens is White Bitch turns into Jean Grey from the 90s X-Men cartoon, gets a telepathic vision for two seconds, and then damn near passes out. She sees some mystery girl, the Pinche Puta from the opening, but before the Antifa wannabes can go any further, these buses show up with these symbols on them. Because you know, no one would attack a mega bus with giant alt-right Nazi symbols on it. So our brave heroes, who are just at this rally to push back against the pro-gun Nazis, decide to attack the guys nowhere near the rally. They're literally getting off the bus, and Discountless Dot says, A couple of leaders are hanging back. We outnumber those fuckers. I say we make them call this shit off. This is the same guy who said supporting gun rights didn't make people the enemy. Now he's running to attack them, and just in case you think that's my interpretation, token Asian girl says, A nuke, you can't defend yourself. Stay back, alright? So they're going to fight. More accurately, they're going to pick a fight. The gimp runs up behind some dude whose radio stops working and the gimp says, Walkie's not working? You just caught the wave, assholes. Quality Kwanzaa riding right there. And then he poisons the dude. Out of nowhere, just attacks him. This guy's not bothering these kids. He doesn't even know that they're there. He's on the radio coordinating with his group, which he's legally allowed to do. He's illegally allowed to attend the rally. It's in Arizona. They have open carry, so he's illegally allowed to have the firearm. He's peacefully assembling. He's allowed to be there. But because these Antifa wannabes don't like that, they run up behind him and poison him because they think he's an alt-right Nazi. And I say they think this because none of these people say anything racist. Of course, that might have something to do with the Asian dude in the group and a stereotypical one at that. Look at that. That is a Chinaman. That is a straight up Chinaman drawn. Look at the eyes. He's even got the thing with the mouth. All he's missing is a fucking fangs. Seriously, a Chinaman drawn. 2019, current year, Chinaman drawn in a so-called anti-racist book. Unbelievable. So now that their boy's been attacked, these evil white supremacists and their black slave just come out guns blazing and shoot these kids down. Oh wait, that doesn't happen. They just check on their friend, and then one of them says that the kid gassed him. Wade, Kwanzaa, you had one job. One job. Make them violent extremists. And what do you do? You have the guy with a gun, rifle, I'm sorry, standing there. He doesn't move. He's got a rifle. Probably one of those military-style automatic rifles with an extended magazine and a bump stock. And it's pointed at the fucking ground. So this violent white supremacist who's such a threat to these kids that they attack them from behind has the composure and control not to shoot any of them. And he could. His friend is being assaulted. He has every legal right to shoot this bitch in the pussy. So anywhere on his body. But he doesn't. He doesn't even lift the rifle. The only response any of them have is this old dude going, what the hell? So to recap, Mark Wade and Kwanzaa Sejepo claim this comic is about, quote, pushing back against alt-right extremists, so they have their so-called heroes randomly attack innocent people lawfully assembling because of who they think these people are. These people have done nothing to these kids. They're not even at the rally yet. Still got attacked. And in response, they do nothing. In other words, these dipshit writers made the Nazis the innocent victims. Meanwhile, they've turned their so-called heroes into violent terrorists. Oh, Mark Wade doesn't like me saying that, but under Arizona Criminal Code Section 13-2301, subsection 12, quote, Terrorism, including any completed or preparatory offense that involves the use of a deadly weapon or a weapon of mass destruction or the intentional or knowing infliction of serious physical injury with the intent to do any of the following. A. Influence the policy or affect the conduct of the state or any of the political subdivisions, agencies, or instrumentalities of the state. Like, I don't know, trying to force a public school not to implement a state policy allowing teachers to carry firearms. Or C. Intimidate or coerce a civilian population and further the goals, desires, aims, public pronouncements, manifestos, or political objectives of any terrorist organization. Such as attacking a group of people because they follow different political positions and using this attack to scare off anyone else with similar political views. Or as Wade and Kwanzaa would say, push back against them and make them go away. Oh, but it gets worse. 
Discount Lestat, the same guy who says that supporting gun rights doesn't make you the enemy, starts randomly attacking the pro-gun folks, these alt-right Nazis who are just chock full of black dudes. Seriously, there's Miles Morales, John Henry Irons, and Cuffs. I thought these people was racist. What is with all these niggers? Just niggers everywhere. And he's got a white supremacist tattoo. Like, do they let you have that? So the media shows up and then Discount Lestat goes, cameras, forgot about that. Masks aren't everything. If they catch too much of us, we're screwed. So maybe it would have been a good idea to wear some fucking sleeves. They can see your tattoos in Mexico, Bendejo. How are you this stupid? You're smart enough to cover your face, but not the unique, totally identifying tattoo on your arm. And then our righteous heroes pushing back against the alt-right Nazis attack the reporters. They destroy the cameras, blowing up the lenses, you know, the part where the glass is, that could cut up the back of this black dude's neck, so that they can't get caught, even though they've been sending their manifestos to the entire school over the internet for like a week. They have all the footage they need to identify all of you little trust fund babies. But to recap, these totally not violent extremists randomly assault a bunch of activists, and then when reporters attempt to film this, they attack the reporters. And it's written as if the Antifa wannabes are the victims defending themselves. Oh, but this is totally not a pro-violence propaganda tool. Finally, one of the so-called alt-right Nazis decides to act, and he's like, Antifa, right? Figures. Scum. You saw boys need to learn that an armed school is a safe school. We won't let you push your pussy agenda. Just real quick. These are supposed to be alt-right Nazis. White supremacists, right? So what's up with this black chick? Come on, she's darker than me and Kwanzaa combined. We're supposed to think what this guy says is wrong, but again, these Antifa wannabes literally started the fight. There wasn't a fight. The two sides were just standing off shouting at each other. Then the gimp poisons the dude and the guys with the guns don't shoot him. Instead, they just yell at him. Then the other Antifa wannabes start attacking people who aren't even near them. And again, even though these people are armed, none of them fire a shot, even as they're being attacked. So these guys have every right to restrain the gimp. It's self-defense. Arizona Criminal Code Sections 13-404, 405, and 411. They could kill all of these kids and be totally in the right, and yet they don't because Mark Wade and Kwanzaa Sojepo are so woke that they've got to make their pussy characters look strong so none of these people fight back. The result is that the so-called white supremacists look like victims. Because they are. None of them attacked first. And even when they're being attacked, they don't attack back. They don't fire off a shot. No one even points their guns at the kids. They just get leveled, like this guy who the gimp gives hives. You're damaging the dude's skin, and why? Because he talked shit? That's it? You've got this guy ball gagged with a rifle barrel. And all of this is because they support gun rights. Keep that in mind. This entire series is a commentary on gun rights. So what Wade and Kwanzaa are saying is that it's morally righteous to torture and mutilate gun rights activists because they must be alt-right Nazis. You can literally assault them first, start the fight, and still be the victim. And if that weren't enough, the Antifa wannabes start flipping out because things are getting out of control. White bitch finds a pinche puta and tries to convince her to help them settle down the fight they started, and after bugging her long enough, she stamps her feet and calls it an earthquake that separates the groups. Then the so-called alt-right Nazis run back to their buses, and the totally not violent Antifa wannabe extremist says to them, You saw what happened when I got inside those cameras. Wanna see what happens when I get inside your brains? He's threatening to scramble their brains if they assemble in public again, which is their legal right to do. That's not just Antifa shit. That's Taliban shit. That's ISIS shit. That's ironically Nazi shit. These kids are terrorists. They're fascists, just like everybody said. Remember, I supposedly made false claims. Well, here it is, bitch, in black and white in your own hand in the book you approved. You wrote that shit. And I guarantee that if anyone dared to write those words coming out of the mouths of people who took out a Black Lives Matter protest, you'd be calling foul. So not only do you owe me an apology, Mark Wade, for calling me a borderline white supremacist, not only do you owe me an apology for me buying this book, but now you owe me an apology for calling me a liar. 
When you posted your bullshit rent, you'd already written this book. You knew what was in the book. There's no question about it. This book is a pro-violence propaganda tool that tries to justify far leftist violence by having characters dress and act like Antifa and claiming that anyone they attack is alt-right so it's okay to hurt them. This is literally the far left Turner Diaries, down to the ridiculous pizza party the Antifa wannabes have after they maul dozens of innocent people. Are any of them sorry about what they did? No, they freely admit that what they did wasn't a call for peace, but at least they did something. Oh, but that's not enough. White bitch says, what did we really do, people? We ran out some Nazis, but they're an easy target. That's exactly how nonviolent social activists speak. Calling people with opposing political views easy targets. MLK said that every day. Targeting people to attack them, to commit physical violence against them in the hope of intimidating other people. And they plan on doing it again. You know, like terrorists. Oh, but I'm the one who's mistaken. The only good thing about this book is the art, and that is probably better than the next Star Wars film. Other than that, it's complete pro-violent Antifa extremist SJW spank bait bullshit. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.